welcome to our first midweek coaches show for the 2022 season. This is a practice that we began a year ago, uh, bringing in our offensive and defensive coordinators and talking a little bit about last week's game and then later on in the show looking ahead to next week's game and then in the middle uh, getting a report on all the other sports that are going on at, the, at this time of year at Smithson Valley from our assistant athletic coordinator Melissa Miller. So uh, we'll just jump right into it. Um, you know, week one football, uh, big, big time setting, you know, playing in a big venue in the Alamo Dome, uh, uh, you know, uh, right up the road school with playing Reagan and other quality program, just a lot of excitement, just a great way to kick off the season. And, uh, and of course, by now you remember or know, uh, you know, we were able to pull out a 14 to 13 win uh, in the Dome over Reagan. And uh, let's start with Coach Worstifer, Craig Worstifer beginning his 31st year. Yes, sir. 31st mm -hmm. year at Smithson Valley and our longtime defensive coordinator. And uh, Coach, what about the Reagan game uh, from a defensive perspective? Uh, what went well, what, what didn't go well? Well, what went well? What went really well was our offense keeping the ball for most of the game. Uh, we got out of the game only playing 30, 30 or so snaps, and uh, you know that, that makes it really nice. I thought our kids ran to the ball well, tackled well, uh, you know, had to stay engaged because the offense was on the field a long time. I was more concerned about maybe, you know, pulling a muscle because we were cooled off on the <laughs> on the bench being there so long. But uh, uh, you know, Reagan presented some challenges to us. They had. They had a, good quarterback and throw the ball well, some good receivers, and of course the, the returning tailback they had right. ran for a whole lot of yards last year, but I was pleased with our tackling, I was pleased with our kids, uh, you know, short of the one, he had the, the long run, I thought we did a good job of containing the run and stopping the run and, and uh, you know, against a really quality, well-coached team. No doubt. Uh, you mentioned 30, 31 snaps, that is unusual, sometimes that's a, a whole half, but mm -hmm. uh, for as a low scoring a game as it ended up being, you know, we did. We possessed the ball. I think we had 67, 68 offensive snaps, 30 defensive snaps, uh, you know. But uh, the, because of that, the, game, the reason it flowed that way, the game really w was kind of devoid of explosive plays. We yes, had sir. six. We only gave up three. An explosive play, as we define it, is a run of over 12 yards or a pass of over 18. And as I, as I mentioned, we only gave up three. And so I thought that was a big thing. That was a big part of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we kept them from, from hitting the big ones, short of three of them. Uh, you know, we got to clean up some things and, and, and try and fix that. And of course, one was a really well-designed play by their coach and staff that they executed well. Uh, they, right. you know, but we got some things we can clean up to even eliminate some of those, which is encouraging. No doubt. Uh, another big factor in the game was the kicking game, of course, the special teams. and. Uh, it was, uh, was kind of good news, bad news, real frankly. You know, we, we let them block a punt, which is uncharacteristic for us, that they actually recovered in the end zone for a touchdown and counted for uh, uh, seven of their 13 points. And so uh, that's a mistake we have to clean up. We had three big kick returns. We ran a punt down to the three. We ran two kickoffs back to almost midfield, and all three of those uh, came back because of a blocking in the back penalty, which is a frequent uh, penalty early in the year when the speed of the game gets you and all of a sudden the guys you're blocking are moving faster than what you've seen out of a scout team in practice. So, you know, we had some negative things there in the kicking game, but on the on the upside, we blocked two extra point field goals. Uh, yes, sir. Tell us about those plays, Coach. Well, uh, Freddie uh, DeBose came in, got the first one. He just came really hard off the edge. And, of course, David DeHoyos is right inside of him, and he presented a, a great pressure in there that kind of caved that side down. Uh, which was huge, which, uh, you know, held them to six and allowed us to keep right. the lead at that point, seven to six. And then, of course, uh, late in the game, right after we had taken the lead, they, they had gotten it down there on an explosive play and, and were trying to field goal. And David DeHoyos got a hand on it, and I think Colton even tipped it a little bit there on that one too, right. uh, which, was, was, which was big. No doubt, you know, we, we, uh, we block one of their extra points, block one of their field goal attempts. We make all of our kicks, you know, our punt, our punt net was good aside from the one punt. So, uh, you know, special teams made a difference, but as you said with our defense, there's things we must clean up. Uh, and the other thing I think, and we'll bring in Coach Glenn Hill now, uh, our offensive coordinator is, uh, we did snap the ball 67, 68 times, but uh, we also took care of the ball. We got two takeaways on defense, and then offensively, we took care of the ball. Absolutely, and I think that's huge. Um, defense getting us two extra possessions uh, with an interception and a forced fumble by uh, Gavin Woods that I think DeHoyo scooped up for us. Uh, both of those gave us great field positions, and a couple of times it was after 
you know, an untimely fourth down not conversion right. on our part. So we kind of gambled on our defense and it, it paid out pretty big for us. And it, it's really nice when you can trust each other to do that. No doubt, you know, uh, we used three tailbacks. Now what's, yeah. what's the thinking on that? Well, you know, we got three really good players, bringing one over from defense and David DeHoyos, uh, Doug Lance and Brad Sowers we also played. Right. And not just trying to keep guys fresh and get a rotation. You know, we got three really good football players that we need to feature and get them to football. Um, and not just that, we played seven offensive linemen, four or five guys had catches. And I don't think that's a negative thing. I think that just shows us that we've got a, a good group of guys that's now battle tested against a really, really good Reagan football team. No doubt. And uh, the other thing I do think, and, and I think it showed itself the other day, is whichever tailback is in the game in the fourth quarter when we're going to try to win and we got ahead, and then later when we need two or three first downs to run out the clock, whatever tailback in has got fresh legs. That's he, right. he doesn't have 30 carries or 35 carries. And, I think you saw that as Doug began to wear him down in the fourth quarter. Right. Much like our special teams, much like our defense, though, we've got some things that, uh, uh, that we've got to clean up offensively. Two big holding calls. Yeah, we had some, uh, like you said, 60, 66, 67 plays, but only 14 points, and sometimes that doesn't necessarily add up. Uh, need to do a better job going forward on finishing some drives, not having the, you know, the, the penalties that, that really right. derail some drives, and we had some explosive plays get called back. Uh, because of that. But, you know, our guys did a really good job of sticking with it and fighting to the end. And when we needed to have a six and a half minute drive in the fourth quarter to finish it off, they hunkered down and they got it done. Did, did what they had to do. Uh, created six explosive plays. Our, run, our wide receiver misdirection run game was big. Uh, Freddie DeBose, Kyler Clark, uh, you know, Reagan was really good up front. And uh, sometimes you've got to make them think it's A when it's really B. And then other times you got to, well, they think it's A and it is A and we've got to execute. And I thought we did a nice job of both of those things. So, but we got a lot, uh, you know, we got a lot to improve on, but when you play good people in that kind of setting, uh, mistakes are costly. And they also flush out mistakes, things to work on. And so we're very thankful for that. And, uh, uh, but unfortunately, uh, I was thinking on the bus ride home, man, boy, that may be as good a team we're gonna play all year. <laughs> Uh, it, as it turned out, I was wrong. Uh, we, we, we got another big one this week, and we'll talk about that in a few moments. But before we talk about next week's game, let's talk about uh, the, the, the re, let's recap the previous week in volleyball and team tennis and uh, water polo, cross country, the, some of the other sports that we have going on at Smithson Valley. We're going to bring in our assistant athletic coordinator, Melissa Miller, and she's going to bring us up to speed. Coach? Thanks, Coach. Congratulations to our football team on a huge win over Reagan on Saturday. Um, there's also a couple of other programs going on here at the school that we want to talk about. These kids have been working all summer. All of these seasons started well before school did, so we want to give a huge shout out to our water polo, our tennis, our cross country, and our volleyball teams. Um, we'll start with cross country. Last weekend, they had their first meet of the season up in Westlake. Um, Coach Hall reported that they had a ton of PRs. Those kids' work over the summer has really, really paid off. For the boys, uh, Schaefer Robertson brought home the third place medal with a huge PR of 1539, so congrats to Schaefer. On the girls' side, we actually finished fourth as a team, and the three teams that we finished behind are all state ranked. So it's looking like it's gonna be a fantastic season for our cross country kids. Um, if you have a chance, go out there. Um, you probably see them running around in the mornings, but they'd love some support on the weekends. Um, so congrats to them and good luck in your next meet. Moving into tennis, tennis has already started. They're rocking and rolling. Currently, our varsity team is 5-2. and two. They are 2-0 and oh in district. Um, they're playing well, working hard. Coach Lalonde's really happy with their intensity in practice, the way their practices have been going. In the past month, he's already seen a ton of improvement. Um, and then we want to give a shout-out to our GV team, who kicks off their season today, September 1st, at Bernie Champion. So if you have some time to get out there and watch those kids, I know they'd appreciate it. And then moving into water polo, our inaugural season of water polo here at Smithson Valley. Um, coach Hilliard is our new swim and water polo coach. Coach Fritcher is returning as her assistant. Um, first year having water polo in our district. So we're really proud of the kids and coaches, how they've adjusted, how the parents have handled it. Um, they had their first match last night here at Smithson Valley against Alamo Heights, who's a state ranked powerhouse. And we're just really proud of the kids and the way that they've worked and persevered. Um, all of their matches are either here or at the other high schools. So we really encourage you to come out to our pool here on campus when they're here and watch those kids. A lot of them are swimmers who are trying out water polo for the first time, and they could use a little bit of encouragement and support as they represent Smithson Valley. 
Um, moving into volleyball. Volleyball got started August 1st. I couldn't be more proud of the way the girls have been playing. Our varsity team is currently 20 and 6 overall. Um, we've participated in three tournaments. In those tournaments, we've brought home a first place medal, a second place medal, and a fifth place medal. Um, our freshman team needs a huge shout out. They are 3 0 defeating powerhouses Reagan, O'Connor, and Harlan. So we're expecting a big season from that group of freshmen. And then we need to give a huge shout out. This past weekend, we hosted our showdown tour tournament. Um, here at the high school. We want to say thank you to all of the parents, kids, community members, businesses in our community that supported us through that tournament. It was a huge success. Um, we loved having it. Look forward to hosting it again next year. Uh, the next time you can find volleyball is this Friday. We will be at Steele High School. Freshmen play at 5 and 6. Our JV plays at 530. And you can find varsity at Steele at 7 o'clock. Thanks. Back to you, Coach. Thanks, Coach Miller, for that update. Congrats to our players and athletes of, uh, uh, of our other sports for having a good week, and good luck as we press forward in the schedule that's still to come. And speaking of schedule to come, we've got uh, uh, a second non-district game this week, second of three non-district games, and we're going to have our home opener here at Ranger Stadium this Friday. And we're going to play the Harker Heights Knights, a uh, 6A program, a very strong, stout, capable of making deep runs 6A uh, playoff team up in the Colleen area and we if you Ranger fans may remember two years ago we played them in an opener it was the COVID year and we had to reshuffle our schedule and just find games that uh, were not previously scheduled and we landed on Harker Heights and uh, um, so they're coming back to Ranger Stadium for the first of a two-year set and uh, uh, extremely talented well-coached hard-playing team that uh, will very likely win their district and very likely make a deep 6A playoff run. So, uh, Coach Westerfer, who scheduled this game? <laughs> I'd like to find out. I'd like to have a word with them. <laughs> yeah. They are loaded. He was not thinking clearly uh, when he made this game last spring, but uh, uh, they are talented. Uh, you know, let's start with that side of the ball, your side of the ball, our defense stopping their offense. Uh, of course, they've got a running back and two offensive tackles and a quarterback, but let's talk about those guys. Yeah, well, they got two Division One offensive tackles. Um, both of them committed to uh, one's Power Five and another's Division One going to UTSA. Uh, really fine football players. Uh, behind them, they got a returning 2,000 yard rusher who's a Division One football player. Uh, and, they, and they play two tailbacks. The other one's really fine, too. He had, he had over 1,000 yards, I believe, last year as well. Mm. Quarterback's the returning uh, district newcomer of the year in their district. Uh, really fine football player. Distributes the ball well. Uh, the receivers, they graduated a lot of receivers last year, but they got, so they got some young ones. But right. I have a feeling in the next year or two, everybody's going to know their names, too. Uh, Hopefully they really don't good. learn them this, this <laughs> yeah. Friday night. That <laughs> That's would be the sure. hope. But, uh, yeah, anytime you have your quarterback back and your and the guys that you hand it to back, and then those two bell cow offensive tackles, you know they they have shown the ability to be explosive. They have shown the ability to be ball control. Uh, in their 11 game schedule, including their playoffs last year, they scored over 63 times, scored over 53 more times, scored over 45 three additional times. So nine of their 11 games, they're over 45 points. So uh, clearly. Got to work uh, cut out for us. Yeah, clearly explosive. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to uh, – got to work cut out for you. It, 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 exactly. Now, on the flip side of the ball, they were there, they're similarly talented and personnel on, on the defensive side. Coach Hill, what, what do they bring to the table? Yeah, not just tremendously talented, but it's apparent they're well coached. You know, they're, they're a very well coached team. They're very sound. Um, you know, four down football team with some really talented defensive linemen, a really big nose guard. A, I think he's 315, 320. Ah, so don't big say old, that. Don't tell our guys. <laughs> yeah, he's might a big old boy up front. And uh, not just big. You know, sometimes you just play people with size and speed. But they've got high motors. They get after it. They fit things well. So we're going to have to be sharp and ready to play some football. No doubt. And uh, and then we'll have to find some, some hidden points, some hidden yards. And we brought up the kicking game earlier. You know, our return game has got to be strong. Our, our kickoff and punt coverage and have got to be have got to be strong. And, you know, we've got to – this will not be a game where we just show up and do what we do, you know, this, this will be another uh, scratch and claw and find a way type games. And uh, uh, all kidding aside, those are what you like in your non-district schedule. Uh, hopefully you get the result you're looking for in, in terms of wins and losses. But uh, at the same time, you, 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 to, to go where you want to go, you're going to be playing 
this level of teams. And uh, last week and this week and weeks to come, Smithson Valley's up against it. So uh, uh, anyway, we hope that you'll be here this Friday night. It's our home opener, 7 o'clock kickoff at Ranger Stadium. Smithson Valley taking on Harker Heights in a non-district game. If for some reason you can't be at the game, well, as always, you can watch it live on the Rangers Network. And uh, uh, if you're not a subscriber, then you can become one. If you'll just uh, follow the directions on the screen, you can become one, and that link will go live, and you can watch it there. So whether you're here at the stadium or at home watching, we hope you'll come out and support us. Go Rangers.